Hey, Discovery Church, welcome to Church Online. Super excited to have you here. I've got a couple quick announcements for you before we jump into the message. So first and foremost, we have a Discovery Zoom Hangout coming up on the 21st. So make sure to check out our event on Facebook for more details about that. Also, we are super thankful for your giving and your generosity. If you would like to give, check out the link in the description or text the number on the screen. Also, we have a worship music playlist. This is a way that we can worship together from a distance. So make sure to check that link in the description or go to our YouTube page for that playlist. And finally, if you haven't joined a Discovery community, this is our number one way to connect right now. And it is so life-giving. I highly encourage you to email Melissa Pearson, that's mpearson at dcboise.org if you're interested in joining a Discovery community. Well, that's all I have for you. Now I would like to introduce our speaker, Gabby Ackley. Hey church, it's Gabby here, and I am so excited to be bringing the word today. I feel like the Lord just really put this on my heart. And so in faith, I'm going to share this message which is titled God's Way Forward. So before I start, I'm just going to pray. God, I just thank you so much that you are here with me in this room, Lord, and that you are helping me to speak clearly and give the message that you've put on my heart for your church, God. And I just pray that I do it justice. I pray that um, you give me peace and I just pray for everybody's hearts to be open uh, to receive the word that you have for them. And I pray all of these things in your name. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about a very unique group of people, the Israelites. Now, the Israelites had witnessed the plagues in Egypt and been freed from slavery. And they witnessed a lot more miracles from God. They left Egypt and when they had a mountain on this side and another mountain on this side and angry Egyptians behind them, God parted the sea and they walked through on dry land. So that was an amazing miracle. And God did more things that they got to witness in person, like when they were in the wilderness and they didn't know where to go. So God sent them a fire by night to tell them when to go and when to stop. And they also he also sent them a cloud by day. So the Israelites are a group of people who have witnessed amazing things from God. And so today we're going to be looking at a story in Numbers 13. So if you want to go ahead and get your Bible out, you can flip to Numbers 13. And we're going to read a little bit, talk a little bit, and yeah, let's jump into it. So Numbers 13, starting at 1, says, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran, all of them were leaders of the Israelites. The Lord had a promised land for the Israelites that he wanted to gift to the, them, that he wanted to give them. And so at this point, they know that God has said he's giving them the land and they're, and they're leaders, but they know God has promised this to them that I am going to give you this. And so they're supposed to go out and explore and scout out the city and what it looks like. And so when we jump down to 17, it says, When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the Negev and into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land, for it was the season for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob toward Lebo Hamath. They went up through Negev and came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, lived. Hebron had been built seven years before Zon in Egypt. 
When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. That was the place called the Valley of Eshkol because the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. So they're out there, they're exploring Canaan, and you have to remember that they're out there for 40 days. They're not sent on a short little mission to see what it's like. They're out there for 40 days and seeing what it's like. And then they come back to give Moses this report. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amakalites live in the Najib, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. So you hear them talk about this, and they're like, yes, the Lord has said he will give us this land, and this is what the land is like. The Lord is right. But then they say, but... And one of my favorite pastors ever, Rich Wilkerson Jr., has said that when you lead with your butt, the only way that you're going to go is backwards. And so they knew that they were in the land that God had for them, but then they started letting fear get in the way and other things get in the way. And that's what they focused on when sharing and decided we don't want to go back there because, but... There's the Canaanites and the people are strong and there's giants and all this stuff. And so I want you to think about a time that God said something to you, but maybe your butt got in the way. But I don't have the money for that mission trip. But it's hard. But I don't have enough education. But it's unknown. I don't know what it'll look like. I want you to think about those times and then listen to the next verse. <clears throat> then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. Caleb decided not to look at the fear of the giants and the fortified cities and everything, but instead look at faith and knew that if God said he could do it, that he could do it. <clears throat> But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than me than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. The land we explored devours those living in it, they said. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So again, they decided to focus on the but. They decided to instead say, well, but God, they said, but ooh, all of these circumstances. Now, I want you to think about how many gifts and blessings and opportunities have you denied God, from your unwillingness to go there. They didn't want to go back into the land. They were afraid. And it makes total sense why they're afraid. But historically, the way that God does things doesn't make sense to us as humans. Um, for example, they're telling the Israelites to go into Canaan where there's a bunch of giants and it looks super dangerous. Um, how about choosing David, a punk kid, to defeat Goliath? Like, that didn't make sense to David. It didn't make sense to his brothers. It didn't really make sense to anyone. What about God's direction for the church not to meet in this time, but yet focus on discipleship and other things? It doesn't make sense always to not have what we had and go in and do all of that stuff right now. But... We're going to do what God called us to do. And so when you're thinking about 
how many things have you maybe not accepted from God because of your unwillingness to go there? I just encourage you to go there. And instead of looking at the circumstances and how hard it is or any of that, I want you to move your eyes up and look and focus on God. So instead of telling God about all your problems, I want you to tell your problems all about your God. Now we're going to jump into Numbers 14, 1 through 11. So you can flip there. And we're going to talk about some grumbling and complaining. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? They said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. And they wanted to go back to something that was awful, you guys. They were in slavery there, but they wanted to go back. Instead of choosing faith and pressing on to the unknown, they wanted to go back to something awful yet comfortable. But then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those had explored the land, they tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and it will, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. So, Joshua and Caleb are really, out of the 12 spies, out of the 12 leaders, are usually the only two that we remember. And I really think it's because they had a different story, or what we'll read in a minute is that they had a different spirit. And so they're saying, no, I want to be full of faith. God has said this. It's true. We can do it. And everybody else, the majority, was not willing to do that. They were too afraid. And they were mad at the other two for wanting to. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the signs I have performed among them? So I want you to think about where you are right now, where the church is right now, where the country is right now. And I want you to know, like, think about, are you looking at your circumstance and wanting comfort of what was more than you're looking to God. Let me say that again. Are you looking at your circumstance and wanting comfort of what was more than you're looking to God? You're grumbling and complaining, even if it's justified, does it outweigh how much you process with God about it? It's a really tough question, and I don't wanna to be too tough but the good news is you're not the only one. Like I think most of us, and especially me, is feeling convicted even reading what I wrote, even saying what I am saying. But my discussion question for you is, do you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself? It's a very Gabby thing to say, but I'm serious. Do you need to check the words that you're speaking, the way that you're treating other people in comparison to how much time you're spending with God. Uh, we're about to figure out, if you don't already know the story, that the Israelites are about to totally wreck themselves besides Joshua and Caleb, right? Because they're different. <clears throat> so the Lord is super angry, like it makes sense. And the Lord and Moses have a conversation. 
And the Lord is like, I want to send a plague. I want to destroy these people. I am so mad. And Moses is like, well, like God, what would that look like maybe to other people? And what you've said and all this stuff. So at the end of it, the Lord makes a decision. He makes a decision that all of the spies who decided that they were going to be full of fear and not listen to the Lord and not trust in the Lord weren't going to enter the land. And that the only two people out of the spies that were going to be able to were Joshua and Caleb when they were super old. And for every single day that the 12 spies were in Canaan, exploring and scouting out the land for every day, there would be one year that they would have to wander in the wilderness before they would get to the promised land. And that all the other 10 spies were going to die or get lost wandering in the wilderness. But if you look to Numbers 14, 24, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. I love the meaning of the name Caleb because it means loyal and faithful and wholehearted. And when I read that, it makes me think, man, I really wanna be like Caleb. Man, I really wanna be different. I want the Lord to see that in me. And our whole mission at Discovery Church is pursuing wanderers to become wholehearted adventurers with Jesus. There comes a point in your life where you have to decide that there is no other way for your life besides following Jesus, that there is no other option. And Caleb and Joshua did that, that they decided even though there are giants in front of us, even though there's this crazy circumstance and it's scary and all the other things that they wanted to do, what God instructed them to do, and they had faith over fear. They had faith. And so if you're at a point in your life where you are deciding, man, I want to follow Jesus, and this is it, and there is no other way for me, then the pastors are totally available to talk to you. And when I think of an example in my own life, I think of an example of somebody else in my own life, who was a really perfect example of doing this, just following Jesus no matter what. And I think of Brandon and Anna and DDA going to Madagascar. And I think of like, if it were me, I would be pretty scared like having to make that decision and all this stuff. And there was a lot that they sacrificed to go there, but they decided to do it and be blessed by it because that's where God wanted them, because that's what God said to do. And there's no other option. And same thing with the direction of the church. I mean, we are praying and taking intentional time and doing our best to pray and see what God wants to do in this season. We're not going to do anything that he doesn't want us to do. We're going to pray and seek direction on what to do. And I want there to be more stories like that or more stories of like Brandon, Anna, and DDA where, I mean, it's just full throttle going Jesus's way. Now, this message is pretty intense. This message is a little bit blunt, but there's a lot of hope. The hope is that the faithful ones, Joshua and Caleb, got the gift that God wanted to give them. They got to go into the promised land and they got to have their children and their children and their children be in Canaan, be in the promised land. Um, and the good news for you is that God has gifts for you that he wants to give you. He wants you to trust him and he has so many plans for you and moments for you. And he wants to talk to you and hear from you and show you things. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And so you have to choose to follow Jesus, you have to choose to enter into that. I'm gonna stop looking at my circumstances and I'm gonna look more towards God. 
there's going to be a lot of stories that comes out of what God wants to do in your life. You just have to choose God's way forward. So let's pray and end. God, I just thank you so much for this time. And I pray, Lord, that you just open up and touch the heart of everybody who's listening. And people who have heard this story over and over, probably different sermons on it, God, I just pray that there is something new that you revealed to them. And Lord, that they can look at their circumstances and look at the world today and decide to really choose to go your way forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, church. Thank you for watching that message. We hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to learn more about Discovery Church, check out our website, www.dcboise.org, or follow us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.